My name is Rustan Rocky Williams. I came here in 1958 at 22 years of age, leaving my mother and my father in Jamaica. The first I ever leave my home before I came here, well, everybody was JLO, UCS, or Gloucester, coming to Gloucester. I have a sister and a brother in Gloucester, and my brother wrote me, spell the word Gloucester, J-L-O-U-C-S-E-R, and put J-L-O-S-T-E-R in bracket, telling me that the pronunciation is Gloucester. And when I came here, before leaving Jamaica, I had to leave my mother. I cried the whole time. People thought I was just mad. And I drink all day. You know, they got to spread it, get a towel, wet it, and burn my head. All I was saying, my mother, my mother. And I came here, and the first thing I do, I wrote to my mother. My father and I, we didn't see eye to eye, really. You know, the West Indians, them. And everything was all right. When I came here, my brother had a job provided for me at chemical work. I can truck a job, a cold on a boat, and I didn't go about the job until Thursday. And he said to me, you want to start now? And I said, definitely. And from then, the first time I write up my work number, you know, write, the foreman take it and walk all around and said, the first thing he asked me, did you learn to write in Jamaica or over in England? I said, you got to be joking. And that's where it goes from there. And I work for until about three years. And I leave it. You could get one job today. Leave that job, and I can get two, three jobs for the same day. Well, when I came to the UK, the first thing is, they said, the English people say, no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. And I weathered the storm because I was one who just look at you and say what I like about you, what I don't like about you. I never beat the bush. I just, the impression is you get up, you go to work, you come home, you got to do three shifts, morning, noon, night. And it was 48 hours, 48 hours for the week. And when you do the 48 hours, you've been getting about eight pounds for the 48 hours. If you do overtime, you might get nine pound or nine pound, 10 pound. That's all you've been getting. You got to send money home for your parents. You got to pay your rent. You got to drink. And thing like, let's see, so it wasn't nice, but you know, you stick to it. You stick to it, so better days will come. You always think better days are coming by and by. I can show you plaque that I have here that I get for the work that I done in Gloucester. I had a van, and if I see you on the road going my direction, I stop and I see you on the left. I'm like that. Yeah, yeah better days come when I retired, when I was in the church went into the church after I retired. I just feel to come here for five years and go back home to Jamaica. That's the reason why I came here. I wasn't happy longer than five years. And I'm here over 60 odd years now. I long five years, don't it? For five years came, I, I married, one child was born. And then I learned to drive. I got a car by 1957. I passed my driving test. You could drive from here to Scotland without a all you have to do, get an L plate, license driver beside you. And then six months time, I pass my test and drive all around big towns and everything. But my home is in Gloucester. I saw my mother about three, four times. No, she never come to the UK. She didn't like travel. They went to Cuba. One of my sisters born in Cuba and one born two months after they went back to Jamaica. When she died, I was at the funeral. Well, about 18 years, I went for a visit to visit my parents. Oh, we hug, we kiss, we cry. I said, well, I see my mother again before she died. And I, I think I'd see her twice or three times before she died. I was in England when my mother died. I was at Bible school in Bristol. Oh, man, it was terrible, the feelings. And everybody waiting on me to come back. And when I saw the other siblings, I said to them, I said, well, I don't know who's going to Jamaica, but I'm going to Jamaica to my mother's funeral. When I went back to Jamaica at my mother's funeral, 
Oh, it was heartfelt, man. Heartfelt, I cried. I cried. And one of the main things that caused me to cry, you know, my mother was a higgler, and she had different things, you know, ripe banana, ripe mangoes, stangerine, everything. And the little children, them just about that height, some five years old, come, that's their, they go take what they want. And that was what happened, you see. When I see that, you know, everybody said, oh, oh she's a good mother, she's a good mother. And that was what touched my heart. I didn't have any children in, left behind. Nine siblings left in Jamaica, because there's 12 of us. Well, they were all big people, really, so I didn't worry about them. And they were in their birthplace, so it was all right. They let every one of them start coming over now. I have seven children in the UK. Well, my first daughter, she left Gloucester and went to London, and she'd be working at Food's place until she took retirement. And my other daughter, she went to America. She used to work at GCHQ in Cheltenham, and they sent her to America. She married over there and have three children. I told my children them about Jamaica. And we went to St. Anne's, you know, the, yeah, the falling. When I was in my 70s, I went to St. Anne's and climbed the fall from top to bottom, from bottom to top. My growing up of children in England, you know, in the West Indies, the relationship between parents and children is different from over here. Over here, the children, most of them, they're looking for what they can get from parents. But parents, we didn't look that way. Well, firstly, everything you get in Jamaica is fresh. Over here, it's from fridge and things like and oven and things like that. We didn't have that in Jamaica in those days. No, I wouldn't do anything different. Even though I love Jamaica still. Jamaica is my home. Yeah, I'm happy as life moves on. You know, when we came here, the English didn't like you, but they look like they like you. And I, I was one man who never cared about them. They called me all names, but I just take it. And I told one, one English guy opened my door for me. And I said, thank you very much. I have to t something to write about and tell my mother that Englishmen are white men opening doors for me. Well, my first Christmas in England, I was drunk, walking home, and it was snowing, and I fell down in the snow. And <laughs> good job somebody find me, because if I did stop longer, I would be a dead man. And they took me home to my friend's house and plug in a big heater. I lay before the heater to warm me, warm me up. That was my biggest predicament, you know. Well, there wasn't anything best in those days, mind, because I was single, disengaged, and I do what I want to do. You see, I do what I want to do, not what I don't want to do, and somebody have to force me to do it. I was my own man then. You know, my brother and I get on very well. And my sister as well, because since I leave Jamaica, she was the one who looked after me, get my clothes ready, get my food ready, and everything. So I didn't have any problem in in that line. The best thing happened to me in England is going to church, being a Christian. That's the best thing happened to me because in Jamaica, you you know what is Jamaica life. You run here, run there, and just free, free as a bird, they would say. But over here, no, you know, you stick to your work. Well, I used to be drinking all the time until eventually I give myself to the Lord. And that was my best thing, the best thing I ever do is be in the church. No, I was 